This is National Chess Master Raw Rats here to continue my video blog uh, series of the team match between Army of Brotherhood and my free video lessons group. And the match currently stands at 11.5 to 5.5 for the Army. There are a lot of results since I uh, made a video yesterday morning. I got one done today and I left quite a few to, to uh, get done. We'll see how many I can fit on this video before I move on. Uh, Again, you know, this match just started January 1st, so all of these players on both sides are guilty of the crime of moving too fast. And fortunately, most people are taking their time. Uh, let's scroll down here a little bit, and I'll get to the first game. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, actually, I already have this one loaded up. I just have to find where it is. And I think I've gone way too far. One second. I will find it. That's not it. There it is. Okay. Uh, we already covered the first game between these two. And now we're going to get the rematch. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, a little bit of lag here. Hopefully that'll go away. Interesting alternative for white is 3e4. Can transpose into the, uh, well, it can become the Flora McKinnis attack. Pretty exciting opening from both sides, beyond the scope of this video. And it just kind of adopts a slow, quiet approach with not much going on. Uh, but there will be plenty going on here in a little bit, as we will see. Now, black decides to part with the bishop pair. And here I think white's best move is queen e2. And the reason for queen e2, or queen c2, uh, queen c2, it secures the uh, c3 pawn. And White's preparing to play e4, uh, try to get the position opened up for the bishops, and because uh, they they need they need squares if they're going to do anything, you know, and uh, it might induce Black into playing f5 to restrain e4, but that gives Black a weakness on e6, and it uh, ties uh, makes this bishop on uh, c8 kind of bad. So it'd be an interesting to, uh, uh, struggle from that point on. Uh, what, 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 what White plays is not bad. It, it's just, you know, I don't think it's necessarily the best. Uh, Black now plays Rook B8 so that he can free his Bishop on C8 to move and not um, drop that pawn on B7. But here I think White's kind of going the wrong direction. Why, why advance the pawn just yet? Uh, let's complete the back rank development first, okay? I think that's a better choice. And here he goes about doing that. Although an alternative would be put the bishop on b2, and maybe at some point the bishop could be activated if white can get d5 in. And black doesn't have a dark squared counterpart. So uh, they start liquidating material. And now black wants to get that bishop off the board. And I think he's going to force it here pretty much, unless white tries to keep it with bishop e1 and then kick the knight out with f3. Might not be a bad plan, then followed by e4 and d5. Uh, but he loses a tempo as a result. Now, could he could he save a tempo uh, so he could uh, take with the queen in one move? Like, for instance, the way to try to save a tempo would be with a move like, like rook, a, rook a2. Uh, I'm not going to analyze it too much here. I'm going to come back. But the problem with rook a2 is black might play rook a8. And white can't play rook a1 or queen a1 because knight takes d2, wins a piece. The pin, there's a pin. And, uh, you know, it's a, just another another game. But let, let's just kind of get down to the nitty gritty of what happened. Uh, white's not doing too badly, like I say, even though he's lost a tempo. Um, but it was at this point that. Uh, White was probably trying for a win, at, but didn't find the correct way to do it. And White has some pretty good options here, and I'm going to come back to it. Uh, I'll analyze this from back to, to front here in a minute, simply because it makes it easier. Because every time I analyze on the analysis board, it wipes out the uh, uh, current game score, and then I have to go open up it again. I'm just trying some experiments. But let, let me just say this objectively first before I advance uh, to, into the game. In order to win this game, white needs a pass pawn, okay? Uh, if for black to win, he needs a pass pawn, right? Uh, 
where where are these going to occur? Well, the most likely place White's going to get a pass pawn is on the E file, simply because he can advance his F pawn and his E pawn up, and eventually challenge uh, Black's pawn on F7, and 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 uh, he, he may get a pass pawn that way, and for Black to get a pass pawn C6 and B5, and there lo and behold, there's a pass pawn. So what White does is White actually is trying to be aggressive here and in a way helps helps black out a lot because uh, what watch what happens here check now black has a pass pawn just like that black didn't have to go through any maneuvering to do it it's just been granted to him okay so white blockades with the queen and queen's generally not a good blockader of a pawn now black has a protected pass pawn and white's pass pawn is miles away but white's got you know, got, does have control of these open files, and I'll show you a better way to use them in here in a little bit. When let's just get to the nitty gritty, see what happens, uh, and we'll talk about taking with the pawn when I back this up. But but White sees uh, a target there, the pawn on c6. He wants to tie that down, and Black finds a very interesting move. He starts advancing the pawn, and here this uh, lulled White into a false sense of security and obviously he had to been moving too quickly because you'll see here in a moment what happens uh, white just didn't count uh, let what white, white will need to play another move here we'll come back to it in a moment because this should have been very easy to analyze okay because it's all forced if you take the pawn what do you do if black takes the queen well you take back and then suddenly black starts running the pawn your king's not going to get over to b1 in time that leaves the rook and the, the uh, white's pawn on c5 is in the way so white needs to put the rook on d6 or a6 let's try d6 now if it was white's move he'd survive because he could play rook d1 but unfortunately now b2 and the pawn is going to promote white's going to lose his uh, rook for the for the pawn and thus white resigns so white you're guilty of playing too quick uh what else can white do well he's got to find a new new square for the queen let's try a6 but i think black's got adequate uh, compensation here he gets the pawn up to the um to the seventh rank and white can't really pile up on it uh black can black can uh, cover it pretty well and uh white's probably going to be happy happy taking a draw but let's let's back up a little bit more and we'll look at this alternative what about taking with the pawn well you see now here white has a very uh, advanced pawn now some people are reluctant to make this move because you say well I've got one pass pawn but my opponent has two two connected pass pawns but is black really going to be able to activate them that's that's the question uh, you got to stop that pawn from advancing. So the queen pretty much has to go here. And as I was saying, the queen doesn't usually make the best blockader of a pass pawn. So it's white to play here. Uh, I don't think white has uh, a discernible advantage, but white shouldn't be losing simply because he's got this uh, this great pawn. Uh, it's it's a fight, uh, but black's getting ready for c5 and getting his pawns in action too. So maybe black's a little better. It's 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 hard to say. But let's back up a little further because white didn't have to go into that line. And I'll show the critical point where I think white missed uh, some great winning chances. Uh, it was right here. Now let's let's talk about this position for just a little bit before we uh, before I show a better line for white. Okay, white has a pawn minority on the uh, queen side. So unless he can win both those pawns uh, for his pawn, well, let me let me say it, state that a better. If White wins those two pawns for his one pawn, we're left with four on three on the king side. That's usually a draw. But if you look at uh, rook endings by Smyslov, there are winning methods uh, that uh, one side can use. Black will need to get h5 in at some point. That's all beyond the scope of this. I, I encourage you to study rook endings. To learn a little bit more about him, about how white can, uh, uh, what well, the four pawns can play against the three, uh, because you never know they could come in uh, into play in one of your own games. But, but objectively, let's look at this position. White's controlling the a file and white's controlling the d file. 
uh, that should be enough to, to 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 play for a win. Uh, let let's let's look at the natural move, queen uh, queen d7. Okay, Black's got three choices here. Uh, he can move the queen away. He can trade the queen, or he can allow the queen be captured. <coughs> let's let's examine them all in turn. Okay, let's let's try the queen trade first. Okay, now this move puts pressure on c7, so uh, Black needs to needs to react. Okay, uh, let's try. Let's first try this rook to, to c8. Well, now white plays his rook from a, a1 to a7. Now there's a double attack on this pawn. And if the pawn moves, f7 falls, and, and white's, white's uh, clearly clearly better here, winning. So that rook doesn't do any good. Let's play this. Now both black rooks are passive, and white's able to play rook a7. Again, now watch what happens after c6. Uh, White, white plays this clever move, rook c7. Now, uh, it's black's turn. The rules of chess say he has to move. What's he going to play? Uh, if he moves his rook on f8, he, he loses his uh, f, f7 pawn, right? If he moves his rook on c8, he loses his c6 pawn. If he moves his king, he loses his f7 pawn. That means black has to move a pawn. Let's pick one. Let's try this one. Well, white has a little tactic here. Rook takes f7. And the rooks are uh, self-protecting. Uh, if black takes on c7, white takes back on c7. And he's a pawn up, and he's pressuring c5, c6. And if black takes the rook on f7, white takes the rook on c8, getting his rook back. And then he's going to win the pawn on c6 next. So black certainly can't move the uh, h pawn. That pretty much leaves the one of these pawns. Let's let's try this one. Okay, just to get a try to get rid of some pawns. Okay, but I think I think White can still do this move, or he could uh, take here first and then play here. And Black has some counterplay because he's got a pass pawn, but uh, the proverbial but uh, White is a pawn ahead, and white's got a 4 and 2 pawn majority. At some point, while white will probably have to drop his rook back, and but then his king will swing over, and eventually this pawn's a goner. This is probably be black's best practical chance for a draw, uh, simply because uh, you, uh, everything else looks pretty bad, and here he's got some counterplay, and maybe, just maybe, he can get that rook activated again. But white stands better in that position. So that eliminates a queen trade from this position, from Black's choice. So let's let the let's let the uh, queen sit. As I said, that was a choice. Let's let's make some air on the back rank left, as we call it. Now I take the queen. Now you have a choice. Which way do you want to take? Uh, let's take with this rook. Well, now I'm going to come down to the seventh rank once again. Okay, and uh, let's see. Maybe that's not the best way. Maybe this is the best way. Yeah, I, I like this way better. Okay, I'll tell you why, just so you know. The reason I'm not picking this move is because black has uh, rook, rook d, f, d, 8, and white doesn't have any tricks here. If he tries rook e7, he gets chased out of there by king f8. So let's let's put the rook on a7. Now, uh, if black opposes the d file, he's going to drop a pawn. So black can't play rook fd8 or rook cd8. Either one won't work. So uh, there's no stopping rook d7 and we're going to pretty much have a repeat of, of what we just what we just looked at. Okay? So that that leaves the alternative to keep the queens on the board. Now when uh, back up one when when black checked in the real game the king went back. So let's try that move again. Now, uh, Black's got to step carefully here. Uh, he can't put a rook on d8 because white takes it, okay? And black will get back rank mated. And black can't oppose the open file because on rook a8, here comes rook takes. And, and then if, if rook, rook takes, we have queen d8 check. So 
Uh, unfortunately for black, this deflects them away from protection of the pawn on c7, and white is bagged upon with the winning chances. So black needs to find another move. Let's go back to, uh, you know, making left, so to speak. Uh, looks like it looks like white's doing okay here. This might be might be the best choice uh, for black. Uh, white should maybe consider a move like rook a2. The purpose of this is it preserves the option of tripling on the open file or doubling on the a file. And the, the whole point is it makes black find the defense. And since both sides are playing quick quickly, uh, because people do not understand online chess, and uh, and uh, but you take your time, uh, people can will make blunders. You know, if you take your time, you can find the right path. And I'm going to keep repeating this. Uh, I'm not doing anything special. All I'm doing is analyzing. I'm looking at moves and, and seeing how they follow up on comparing and con contrasting. Okay, so uh, I'm not saying White would have won this game, but he did have some theoretical winning chances. And unfortunately, instead of escaping with the draw, uh, when things kind of went the wrong way, he ended up losing. Okay, let's get back to the uh, match, and I'll find another game. Um, let's see who's next. Okay, and who knows, there may have been some more results since uh, I started this. It was still the same score, but... Okay, those games are covered. We have a lot of games coming. Now, just at random, let's put the view here. See, look, we have one move played and zero moves played. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid some games are going to end with forfeits, and, and I'm sorry that happens. Uh, but there's always time forfeits. Let's look at another random game. Look, see, well, at least they started. But you see, they, these people are doing the right thing. They're taking their time. And sometimes I, even though maybe somebody does take five moves a day, uh, they're not really taking their time. There's no way to tell for sure. And I've found sometimes I'll play somebody that I look at their games and they have 200 games going. And the way they respond is they log in, oh, say, in for an hour every day, and they start answering uh, games in the order of where they have the uh, less the least time remaining, and that's easy to do. You just set set it to move on to the next game, you know, to to the game, you know, the next in line, and they will answer all the games that that they need to. Then they look and see that they uh, their most current game they have uh, say 17 hours before they have to move and. They make a note to themselves, so I'll log in in 12 hours, and I'll play some more moves. And yeah, and then they're coming in and blitzing out their moves. So, you know, you could be taking five days and still not taking the adequate amount of time, you know. Uh, Hans Berliner said three hours a move. You don't always need that, but sometimes just like I'll say, if I'm repeating myself, great. I'll, not everybody watches every video, and the more times you hear it, the better. Even if you take 15, 20 minutes on a move, you can often uh, avoid disaster and at least uh, f have a better chance of finding the best move. Okay, let's bounce down a little bit. So we got, okay, we got those games. Who's next? Okay, these these games were interesting. Let's, uh, uh, they both won a game. Let's let's look at this game first because I think, I think this one is one I can really help, uh, help with. Okay, and let's bring the game up. Um, White wins this, so you can see he's up a queen, uh, a queen for a bishop and a knight. How would that happen? Well, it's really re interesting how this happened because I've already took a look at this game, and uh, it's kind of like the Shvestnikov. I'm, I mean, there's some where Shvestnikov's where the pawn goes to or the knight goes to c6 first, and d6 isn't played yet. It's similar in a lot of respects. I don't know the theory on this, uh, but uh, the question is, can can black play b4 here? That's a good question. Uh, like, wow. 
Wow, what does white do? He's losing a piece. See, normally when b5 comes, white uh, covers it by bringing one knight back to b1. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Maybe there's something in the books that you can't do this. If uh, if not, you know, here's a crime. You know, there's, there's a crime. What what's white do? Does he have to sacrifice a piece? Does does white get enough uh, uh, pressure here? I tend to think not. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, black has, unless I'm wrong, black b5, bishop g5 is a lemon. You know, you've, white's got uh, white's got to play knight d5 here. Uh, not knight b1, knight d5. Uh, but then that drops the pawn on e4. Puh. Let's let's have some fun here since I'm going to have to reload this anyway because I've destroyed uh, the continuation. Let's play... Let's see what the regular Svestikov looks like. Maybe they'll help me make some sense out of it. Okay. Now, what is... Well, white has the option... Oh, no, you don't play a6 yet. You play d6, right? Now white plays bishop g5. So you, you play playing d6 to keep white from checking on d6. Now a6... Now, what's the difference between this position and and what they had in the uh, in the game? Well, the difference uh, the difference is White already had the bishop on B G five, whereas White had to play it there, and that tempo is made up by the fact that the Black Knight has gone to C six. So let me destroy this and bring it back uh, and go to the start. We'll run, run through it. Uh, so, see the difference? Oh, wait, no, we can still... No. He can still play b4. Now, knight, knight d5, you know, has a pin, but, you know, he's just collecting a piece. Uh, does does white have any play here? If knight takes, pawn takes, and the bishop's tempoed. If bishop takes, take here, and black should be able to defend that pawn on f6. Uh, wow. Just amazing. I gotta, I gotta kill this and reload it. So bishop g5 is a mistake. So that's why you have to slow down. You know, it can make the difference of a win and a loss. Okay, but there's there's plenty more to this that I think is really useful, and we'll see when I when I get there. Okay, so he doesn't play he doesn't play b b four, and now they just white kind of maneuvers to to secure and uh, secure a knight on d five, and I'm going to flip the board here. There's a reason because I want to talk about this from Black's perspective. See, the whole question, I'm gonna, I'll go through the game, then I'll come back. Because, like I say, I, I think there's a lot of value here uh, for how to analyze a game. Okay, white, all of a sudden, black loses his queen for two two minor pieces. And that, so obviously there was a mistake made, and we're going to cover that in just a moment. I'm just going to look at the final moves. And at this point, uh, black deci decided that... Uh, White had too much of an advantage that he couldn't recover, so he resigned. So let's let's back it up. Let's see. Okay. So the whole question is: Did White play the correct move here? Did he, it, it, it was 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 Bishop e two the correct move? And we don't know yet. We have to we have to do some analysis. And the next question is: Bishop takes e3, the correct move. Well, so we have to make a judgment of Bishop takes takes e3, and that's how we decide if Bishop e2 is the best move. And this is how you analyze a game. Uh, uh, when when you're playing it, you look at the alternatives. Now, is this book? I don't know. That's up to the players to determine. Then they can at least see if, if a move was played and why it was played or or not played. But I'm not sure if bishop e2 is the best move, and we're going to come back and talk about that when I get there. But let's look at this. And 
at first glance, I like taking this way because, you know, even though they're double pawns, there's some pressure. Uh, they're controlling f4 and d4. They're controlling f5 and d5. You know, double pawns aren't always as weak as you make, make them out to be. And now the next question is, was this check good? Uh, you know, there's all saying, always check it, maybe mate, or Potzer sees the check, Potzer gives the check. And uh, uh, g3 was played. Now, here's, here's the thing. Now, what, probably White had prepared what happened, but did, pipe, did White fully prepare? We'll determine that. Well, here, now Black has five days to move. He can set the board up. He can analyze it. He can look at it. But all of a sudden, white, black has a problem when he does this. Now, he gave up the queen. Let's see why. The queen's under attack. Where does it go? Well, it doesn't have too many squares to go to. And no matter where it goes, let's, let's look at the worst square. That allows uh, a knight check on e7, followed by taking the queen with check, followed by taking the bishop. So that's a disaster. Queen f5 just gets an immediate fork and you uh, get the, get the uh, queen. And queen c4 or queen a4 don't do anything about an eventual knight e7 check picking up the bishop on b7. So clearly black didn't analyze this position. And if he had, he would have stopped and said, I can't do that. Now, what are black's alternatives? Now, there's some interesting alternatives. Here's one, queen h3. The purpose of this move is to stop white from castling. Now, at first glance, it looks like, well, maybe black has a tactic. Oh, it's interesting to note, I don't think this check does does much, if anything, for black or for white. But let's look at bishop g4. All of a sudden, uh, queen g2, menacing the rook on, on the corner. Uh, does white have enough to sac start sacrificing stuff? Because we're on this pawn on b2. Like, bishop f3 just fails to queen takes b2. What about queen f3? Well, we don't know until we analyze. And I, and I want to say, it, it, once again, uh, this is important. It's an important concept. If, if we give any player over 800 rating and ability a position, white to play and win, with enough time, they should solve it. E even if it's a, a grandmaster that won the game, uh, you're all capable of solving problems. So, in effect, every time you have a, a move in an online game, you're looking for the best move. Now, there isn't always a win, but you're looking for continuations. Now, the purpose of queen f3 is to try to generate some kind of, a, of an attack. Okay, now uh, the, the rook's menaced. Now, white's gambit at a pawn or two for, for an attack. Is it enough? I don't know. Let's, let's try bishop takes. See, all we can do is analyze. Oh, wait a minute, we got a loose knight here. How long is that? Uh, we got to get we got to get that safe. So let's let's take this off. Then yeah, now swing the knight around. Okay. Is Black defending this? My best guess is yes. Uh, the only the weakest square in the Black camp is d6, and White's not poised to assault it. Uh, White's got a half open f file, but it doesn't have enough firepower in there yet. Uh, Anyway, let's back it up. I think I think Black survives that, and it's up to the players to look to try to look deeper and make sure it does. Now, there's another alternative. Well, there's more to this other than uh, other than uh, Bishop G4. What if what if White tries King F2 to keep keep him out? Well, suddenly Black blasts open the F file, and Black's got a very good game here. Uh, well, let's see. Knight check. You got to be careful. See, knight takes is going to run into a pin. You know, it gets very tactical here. Uh, g6. Now, maybe now's the time for queen here. But you know, nothing. Look at that. Now the <laughs> now the queen's trapped. Amazing, huh? See, there's all there's all kinds of resources uh, in a position. So, but then again, white's got or black's got a, black's got alternatives here. Black doesn't have to play g6. Black can play, uh, if anything, he can play rook takes check, pawn takes, and then bishop gobbles the rook on h1. And and 
you have that to fall back on. But what if you just take this directly? Okay, now there's a thread on the knight and it's pinned. Uh, now on bishop g4. Uh, now the queen doesn't have a retreat, but voila, we play rook takes f5 check. And the, probably the best way I can do material-wise is, is uh, bishop takes and then black has choices. You can play rook f8 maybe, get this rook into play. Uh, bust open the king position or or take with the queen and that's with check and then you stay on the rook two pieces of a rook you're gonna win the rook back uh, better not play king e2 because bishop f3 check and on king here uh, we may stop and play rook f8 threatening a mate and I'm gonna liquidate on you what are you gonna do here white here okay bang takes 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 I mean Maybe white can do better than that, but bang, black's two pieces up. So uh, king f, you know, queen h3, king f2 does, doesn't work. Uh, you know, white's, in, white's got a little bit of a dilemma here. Maybe he has to play bishop f1, drive that queen out. But then black's able to play a resource like queen h6, and now there's potential... Uh, to uh, chop this knight off and then threaten this. Now, now white has some resources again, but this is this is how we analyze. Uh, now that uh, guards e3, but then you know you got to cover e4. White doesn't have complete development. He's got one piece attacking. Black's castled and and got his miners pieces out. So you know there's plenty of potential here. And what's interesting is queen h3 isn't the only move at at, at black's disposal. Uh, black could play queen. G or wait, we're going to go ahead and give the check because it weakens the uh, the squares around the king. Black can in turn retreat queen eight queen e three. Pressure on e three. The 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 threat is bishop takes d five followed by queen takes. And uh, you know does white play queen d two? Um, you know who knows? Maybe now knight c five comes in and we're pressuring uh, we're pressuring e four or or uh, do it this way. Take this off, and if he if he takes with the pawn, we we bring the knight in. Now the knight's ready to hop into e4. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of potential here. Uh, I I can't cover every line, but when you're playing a game, if you'll spend two three hours a move, when it you know you when you get what you think is an advantage, you can really really find uh, a lot of stuff. And I've just done this in a few short minutes. And like I say, there's no secret to what I'm doing. I'm just analyzing. I'm, I'm just looking at variations and comparing and contrasting them. So the question, you know, I, th I think uh, queen h4 check is good, but the f but queen takes e4 is a blunder. But but then both queen a queen g5 or queen h3 as a follow up give black a very good game, and and it could have meant a victory. So as I said, the only unanswered question now is was bishop e2 the right choice? Uh, Maybe maybe what White has to do is play f3. Well, you know, that shuts in a diagonal, but at least it secures the c4 pawn, and Black's got, uh, White's got his, his nice outpost here. Uh, queen d2 now, that's a possibility. Uh, but then, let's see, if we take, we don't have to take, take with the queen. Uh, you know this this looks this is playable and if if black wants to part with that just to get rid of that outpost well you know it's a game of chess who knows what's going to happen so i maybe bishop e2 isn't, isn't the better move and you know a complete thorough analysis of this analysis of this is beyond the scope of this video but it kind of gives you an idea what you can do in your own game you can sit there and try this line and try that line and and what's great about the uh uh this opening uh analysis board you can just look look at this you can just copy the moves and now we don't have it here but in, in when you're playing a game you have notes you just go there paste it in you got reference you know the old days when I played I had to write them all down I kept pages and pages of notes of my games uh, but there you have it black lost a game that was very promising okay let's get back to the to the uh, next game, okay, that was between AAD Chess Kid and Awesome. Let's 
see, I think they had another game we have to cover. Let's see what board we're on. Uh, there it is. Okay. Do we look? We didn't look at this one. Okay. Let's look at their other game. And this in this game, the fortunes changed and uh, uh, black won. So you know, it was. Mexican standoff, that means, you know, neither side wins. They they got each got a point. They don't hurt the team. Okay, so let's let's see what happens here. Okay, we're in a Queen's Gambit. Uh, interesting here, I think, and good is C5 going into the semi terrace defense. I think that's quite playable for black. Uh, E3 is kind of slow because it, it, it shuts in this bishop. Okay. But again, all this stuff is beyond the scope of this video. This kind of goes into the Tartakower type lines. Uh, it might be one of those positions where black accepts the hanging pawns. Let's see if that happens. Doesn't happen. Hasn't happened yet. Still hasn't happened. Maybe it's not going to happen. But the hanging pawns, it's position where in the Tartakower where the pawn goes to c5 and white will capture and black will have pawns on c5 and d5 term the hanging pawns. Now I'm not so sure about about f4 here and this is the first time I've looked at this game. Uh, see black's got this outpost but white can drive them out. Uh, is black afraid of or white afraid of an attack? In other words if f3 uh, if f3 is he afraid of queen h4? Well that threatens a mate. So you know f4 is designed to, to, to keep that bishop out of here. But it's, it seems like a, con a concession for white to be making. Of why, did, why do you need to weaken your own pawn structure on move 13 when you're white? Well, part of it goes back to the fact that white shut his own bishop in. Okay? Uh, this bishop is not out here on g5 where it would have had that knight pinned where if the knight had come into e4, the dark squared bishops may have been traded as common happens in a queen's gambit, so we can we can attribute the problem to to that and leave it at that. So black black for right now seems to be for choice, and this is a reasonable move. The idea is to attack uh, on the king side. Now this is trying to take advantage of potential pins. Uh, this pawn is no longer guarding um, the knight on e4 is. Is uh, black going to lose a pawn here? The threat is knight takes. Let's see. What does he do? Uh, knight c takes. And there it is. He's won a pawn. So rook f6 wasn't any good if, if this holds up. I haven't checked it yet. So I said rook f6 looks reasonable. But here, you know, white has done his work. He's, he's analyzed. And... He's analyzed this one correctly, we, or so we're going to assume. Uh, after rook f6, he, he took advantage of the tactics uh, and the pins. So what else should black do? Well, the other natural move that, that's maybe a little more direct is to bring the knight to f6 first. The idea is we want to activate that knight and get it in the game, then bring the rook up. You know, that's a plan for uh, for black to examine on their on his own I kind of beyond the scope of what I can do here so now the only question is can black generate any play well first thing he does is he gets his king out of the way that might have been a more prudent choice before bringing the rook up but then again what uh, nothing wrong with bringing the knight to f6 instead too anyway white saves the piece and creates potential uh, battery of bishop and uh, queen on the b1h7 diagonal. Uh, black plays for h2. White brings the defender over. Not only guards h2, keeps the queen out of h4. Now he brings the knight around. Now white gets aggressive. He's threatening a uh, nice family fork. Knight f7 check. That stopped. But now the queen's ready to hop into h4. So. White has to take uh, some defensive measures here. Okay, so e4, he's trying to... 
I don't, I'm not sure if this is correct, and I'll. It's just my first positional in uh, instinct. See the way I play, I try to play a positional game. See what the the thing I see about that pawn move is that it could cause two pawns to disappear. It doesn't have, mean they're going to. I'm just saying it could cause them. And then this bishop on b7 is that much closer to being active and pointing right at the white king. Okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll look at this and see if black has any way to exploit that when we get there. Uh, he stops and threatens h2. White covers it. And now black misses a chance. So we'll come back and analyze that in a minute. He misses a, a chance to break open the center. And now he has to retreat his uh, his knight. But now the the white the black queen's going to be in trouble here in a second. We'll see. Uh, bingo. Now where does the queen go? It only has this square. And now uh, bishop f2 traps the queen. The queen is lost. So where did black go wrong here? Uh, where else do you put the knight? See, the, the knight took away a flight square from the queen. Uh, it could it could go to g8. That keeps e8 open for the queen. So let's see. Uh, g4 limits the queen to only e4. Uh, is that an alternative? Let's see. Can we do this directly or do we have to set it up? Now the threat is bishop f2 trapping the queen. Yeah, th this might work too. It just transposes. Uh, let's see. I wiped out the notation. What was it that white played? Bishop e3 and then he played bishop a6, right? Let me look at the... Sneak this down. Yeah, bishop a6. Okay, does black have any other saving move? Well, unfortunately, the knight doesn't have a square to go to. So the only other square that's open for the queen is h6, which the rook occupies. The rook doesn't have a safe square to go to. So it appears black is lost. Uh, g4 is a, is a threat. How about bishop, uh, bishop c8? Now the well, no, there's a problem here, or is there? Let's see. G4. Black gets a couple pawns for it. White's. Uh, I mean, White doesn't have to play this, but uh, his king's a little, a little loose here. Hey, maybe that works. Uh, what does White do different? Uh, whoops, hit the wrong button. White could maybe play f5. Shutting that bishop off. Uh, let's try that. Now the threat is again g4 and bishop f2. Yeah, it looks pretty grim for black. I'll let the players analyze this out. But let's back up to e4, and I, which I said I think was not correct. Black has a chance to break the position open. Okay, so I think queen h5 is correct. Let's get off the pin. You know, they're the same file as the rook. Okay, uh, h3. Now, what if what if black takes? Oh, we oh, we got to be careful. There's there's a nuisance fork down here. Okay, well maybe not. Let's see. Um, hmm. Like I say, my first instinct is not good, but then you know I look at the tactics and maybe it maybe black can't take. Uh. See, I want to play this, pawn takes, but it's going to allow a knight f7 check. And on knight takes e4, white could take with the bishop. Then when the pawn takes, but let's let's see, can, can, that's, no, no, you can't. You're just walking into discovered checks. You know, you get, you get, you don't have the, uh, the queen g8 mate trick as the queen, cov black queen covers f7, but this is enough wood. So he's able to get away from e4, get away with e4, it appears. Uh, like I said, my first instinct is it's not good. Then we, But then we analyze tactics, and that's how you proceed. Uh, let's see. Now there's, 
e5 is going to get played. That's a threat. You got to break. You got to break that. Now he played. What did he play? Uh, got to remember because I wiped it out. After he played, he retreated his bishop. He broke the fork. Yeah, he sees the fork coming. So apparently e4 is okay, and and White's got the better game here. Uh, so in this case, uh, White found a tactic. Just like he did in the other, he found a tactic that won, won the pawn, but there was a boomerang. His queen got trapped. Here, black didn't have a boomerang. Let me see how long the video is. It's time for me to stop and uh, hunt and make another one soon for the other ones. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully, these games will be instructive, and I'll be back uh, soon with another video. Thanks. Take care.